Hey YouTube, this is Chris with ThingsThatReallyWork.com and today I'm going to be reviewing the BAFX OBD2 Diagnostic Interface or OBD2 uh, Code Reader. Um, I'm going to hurry up and get into it because it's very hot where I am and it's very hot in the car. Uh, so really quick, let's just go over the construction of the thing. Uh, it's not very much to it, it's just a shell, it's hard plastic and it has the prongs to plug into your uh, your car. Um, I'm actually in the car now and I have already tested this. I actually needed it for my car because it had a engine check engine light on when I bought it. Um, and it actually worked flawlessly. Now I'm going to show you guys how it works. Uh, um, unfortunately but fortunately I don't have an engine light on um, at the moment but I will show um, you know how to set it up how easy it is and and just a few little things that uh, the uh, this thing can do uh, first and foremost though this is actually a universal Bluetooth adapter so that means you can use uh, it's compatible with any Android device and any Windows laptop no Apple products which is a first in my opinion I, I don't think I've ever seen something seen something that worked with uh, Windows and Android and not Apple but it doesn't so um, you're gonna make need to make sure you have one of these um, one of those things another thing I will say though that with the capabilities of this device right here uh, buying a cheap Android phone would be cheaper than buying the, a, a diagnostic device from the parts store that would be comparable to this so uh, with that said uh, like I said it's Bluetooth uh, so you're going to need to uh, download an app and actually several different apps and, and, and software programs can work with this device. So I use Torque because they had it in their manual, which I unfortunately no longer have. Uh, but it's very easy to set up and I, now I'm going to show you guys how. So I'm going to have to open the door a bit because I'm already sweating. And I need to... Usually the diagnostic um, port is going to always be on the driver's side underneath the dash. And mine's here. Plug it in. You want to first plug it in with the car off. And you want to make sure once you plug it in that the red LED is on. Let's check that out and see if that's on. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, there it is. It's on. Alright, so now we want to start the car. Close the door. And if it's hot, turn on the AC or heat. So now that's on. We're going to open up the Torque app. First, make sure Bluetooth is on. My Bluetooth is on. Uh, I'm gonna need to, let me turn it off and then so I can connect it. Cause it actually connected automatically. That was actually really, it's already just automatically connecting to OBD2. So basically you would turn on the Bluetooth. I, I, I deleted the app and everything and it remembered it and saved it. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, that you don't have to set it up uh, all over again. So what you would do is go to Bluetooth, it will show up as OBD2, you will click that, it would sync, and then you will go into your Torque app, okay? Here it is. You will go to hit the gear in the lower left hand corner, then you will go to settings, then you will go to OBD2 adapter settings, then you will go to choose Bluetooth device. And I have a ton of them here, but then you will click OBD2. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. It's already connected though. And then you hit back twice to go to the home screen. And there we are. And up here will tell you when it's connected. See some things are blinking. Now the car is blinking. And it says connected to ECU okay. And that, that, once the car stops blinking, you're connected. And all right, so there's right now you see the acceleration. Um, scroll over. You can add things to it. Uh, 
component status, fuel system status, closed loop using O2 sensor for fuel mix. Acceleration, I'm gonna accelerate and let you guys see. Okay, wait a minute, that must not be what that is. I'm actually not moving, so I can't accelerate. Let's see if we can get some other options here. Okay, let's see. Uh... Oh, add display. Um, and we can go to drive cycle, drive cycle status, fuel air, status widget. Uh, we already had that up. Add display. Um, graph. Okay, we have 0 to 60 time. All these things. Um, okay, engine RPM. Medium. Alright, there we go. Revs. So I'm going to hit the gas again. There we go, you see that? Drop, I'm gonna do it again. I don't have much gas, so. All right, so that's cool. So, and all this is with the free app, okay? I actually thought everything that was star might have cost money, so. It doesn't, zero to 60 time, ambient air temperature. Let's check that. Say a small one. Uh, Oh, you can actually just hold the screen as well. Hold the screen. Add display. Um, you know what? Let's see if we can see fuel trim bank sensor. That's interesting. Intake air temperature. That's good to know. It says that mine is 33 degrees Celsius. This is pretty awesome. Now this device cost me $22 and I have not really played with this. I got this thing to get rid of a um, engine problem I had of uh, my timing device, vacuum, intake manifold, ambient air temps. Do that again. It has no data for the air temperature, okay. Um, but, um, if you needed to clear a code, so you go here to fault codes. Oops. Go here to fault codes and show logged faults. It might show the one I had. No fault code stored because I cleared them. Um, so you would just go there, you would say show, it would show you and it would say hey oh you have code P06441 I'm making that number up and mine just happened to be I clicked it it said um, replace oh it said I had a problem with the airflow or something like that or something electrical I don't know and then it said that uh, it gave me remedies based on other people that had the same car with the same code what they did and it told me exactly which O2 sensor to replace after seventy dollars and thirty minutes of time, I came back on, cleared the code, and it was all good. And all I had to do is clear fault codes, and it's gone. Uh, let's see, show maybe historic faults. Maybe it'll show me something else. Nope, oh, no fault codes. I cleared them all, uh, and I also did delete the app. So, yeah, so that's that. So, I mean, this thing is pretty sweet. Uh, the temperature's gone up 34 degrees Celsius. Um, I'm sure you could change that to degrees, I mean to Fahrenheit. Something I'll have to play around with. Let's hold it and see if we can do that. Uh, move display, add display. Um, I'm sure you can do that, but that's... Maybe it's a, a, a pro feature, I, I'm not too sure. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty nifty device here. It works flawlessly, as you guys can see. Um, definitely, definitely worth um, every penny because at the parts store, the one that was $22 just...
told you the code and that was it um, you know and, and nothing else so uh, with that said I hope that you guys you know this this um, video was able to help you guys make a decision on whether you could uh, get it from Amazon and wait the two days for prime shipping if you have that or if you're going to just go to the parts store and get the uh, you know the 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 one there for the same price which I'm telling you is far far uh, inferior so with that said this is Chris with things that really work signing off I'll catch you guys next review and my conclusion this thing really works hey guys I'm back one more thing I forgot to mention uh, you guys might have seen that it had 0 to 60 times uh, quarter mile times all those things on there and you may be wondering how in the world does it figure that out all that gas mileage well, you plug this in and leave it in and just drive. And it will record all of that data to your phone and you'll just have it for future reference. Uh, so yes, you can leave this plugged in. Uh, I'm sure some people may have had that question. I don't recommend leaving it plugged in at overnight because it doesn't have an off button, which you could probably rig one up with this little thing here, but just unplug it. You know, you don't want to really just leave that there. It might cause battery drain. But while you're driving, absolutely, you can leave this in there. And that might be a good idea to do so just to see how your car is performing uh, on a daily basis. So with that said, I'm signing off and I'll catch you guys next review.